In this session, we'll learn how Civil 3D can help us find the minimum horizontal and vertical distance between entities. We'll start with a couple abstract examples. On my screen, I've got some geometry. This rectangle is a feature line, and then the entity wrapping around it is a polyline. Let me mention that these objects were drawn to an elevation. Just for a second, I'm going to come over to the navigation bar, and I'll launch the orbit command. Let me tip this up, and you can see the feature line is above that polyline. I will then right click and I'll come down and choose Reset View. Now let's say I'd like to find the point at which these objects are closest together. I can do that very easily by going to the Analyze tab, and then I will click to expand the Inquiry panel. From here I'll choose Minimum Distance Between Entities. I will then select my first entity, I'll select the second one. Civil 3D will find the minimum distance between them, and as a courtesy, I have the ability to draw a line segment that shows where that minimum distance was measured. I'm going to choose Yes to do that. We can see they are closest together right here. If I tap the F2 key to bring up the text window, we can see that minimum distance is just over 28 feet. I can now use this information to evaluate and possibly change my design. I'm going to click the X to close the text window. I will then select this line segment, and I'll press Delete to remove it. In addition to feature lines and polylines, this tool can also be used with points, whether they be Kogo, Survey, or traditional AutoCAD points. It also works with lines, arcs, circles, survey figures, alignments, and parcel segments. Next, we'll look at a tool that reports the minimum vertical distance between two intersecting entities. Over here, I have a circle and a feature line. These objects were also drawn to elevation. Once again, I'm going to launch the Orbit command. I'll tip this up, and you can see the feature line exists above that circle. Let's reset the view. In this example, I'd like to find the vertical distance between these entities at this intersection. Once again, I'll come back to the Inquiry panel, and this time I'll choose Minimum Vertical Distance Between Entities. I'll select my first entity near the intersection point. I'll do the same thing with the second entity. Same as before, I can draw the shortest distance line. Now before we look at that line segment, I'm going to tap the F2 key, and right here we can see those objects are just about 10 feet apart vertically at the intersection. Note that I can also see the elevation of each object at that intersection, and the coordinate of the intersection point. I can now use this information to help me evaluate my design. Let's close the text window, and then we'll bring up Orbit one more time. I'll push this up, and if I zoom in, you can see where that measurement was taken. Once again, we'll reset the view, and I'll delete the unnecessary geometry by creating a window selection, and I'll press Delete. In addition to feature lines and circles, this tool can also be used with lines, arcs, polylines, survey figures, and profiles. Now that we understand how these minimum distance tools work, let's try and use them in a practical example. I'm going to jump over to a drawing called Playground. Here I have a proposed parking lot. This geometry was created using feature lines. I also have a proposed playground. The outside geometry was created using polylines. Let's say that there's an ordinance in this area that requires playgrounds to be at least 50 feet from a parking lot. I can use the Minimum Distance Between Entities tool to help validate this design. Let's zoom in. I'll expand the Inquiry panel. I'll choose Minimum Distance Between Entities, and I'll select the feature line at the top back of curb. I will then come over and select the polyline at the outside edge of the playground. Let's choose Yes to draw the shortest line. Right there we can see it. I'll tap the F2 key, and we can see that these objects are separated by a little more than 51 feet. So in this case, it looks like the playground exceeds the 50-foot minimum distance specified in the ordinance. After reviewing the measurement, I'll close the text window, and then I'll select this line segment and press Delete. Let's look at another example. I'll open this drawing called Box Culvert. This corridor represents a proposed roadway, and then this corridor is a proposed box culvert. Let's take a look at these items in 3D. I'll do that by selecting both of the corridors. I'm going to come down and click the Isolate button and choose Isolate Objects. I will then select these again, and then we'll come over and launch the Orbit command. I'll spin this up. We'll zoom in, and as I orbit, you can see how that culvert exists underneath the road. Once again, we'll reset the view, and I'll press Escape a couple times to deselect. Let's zoom in on the north side. Looking at the roadway feature lines, this black one represents the edge of traveled way. The blue one is the outside edge of the paved shoulder. Looking at the box culvert, this feature line represents the top outside corner of the culvert. I'd like to identify the depth of the culvert beneath my edge of paved shoulder. Once again, we'll come back to the inquiry panel. I'll choose minimum vertical distance between entities. 
I'll select the paved shoulder feature line. Note that I can select this even though it's within a corridor. I'll do the same thing with the culvert feature line. We'll draw the shortest to distance. I'll tap the F2 key. And I can see these entities are just over four feet apart vertically, not to mention the other valuable information I have about their intersection. At this point, I can continue to take additional measurements if necessary. Let's take a look at the minimum distance line. We'll launch the orbit command again. I'll spin this up and we can see where that measurement was taken. Finally, we'll reset the view. I will delete the unnecessary items. We'll come back to the isolate tool and I'll end the object isolation. And then I'll zoom out and we'll center the model on screen. So even though we are working in a 3D environment with design objects at multiple elevations, Civil 3D's minimum horizontal and vertical distance tools make it easy to take the orthogonal measurements necessary to validate a design. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.